we are in the brand new uh, Clubman JCW. It's a facelift one, so BMW's life cycle impulse. And we've got the two litre B48 engine, uh, which is a two litre four cylinder model with a twin scroll single turbo. And this is making in this form 302 brake horsepower and 332 foot-pounds of torque. So it's a pretty powerful unit. And that gives an auto 60 time of 4.9 seconds and a top speed of 155 miles an hour, which is limited as well. And I have to say, this thing is really good to drive. It's not quite the hot hatch that a lot of people are probably saying this thing is, but this car is quite big now. It's 1,550 kilos, it's certainly not light. It's certainly not the go-car for the road that some people try to brand it as, but that's definitely not a bad thing because this thing sits in its own category over what the standard JCWs are. So we've got the eight-speed ASIN box, um, which is used in a lot of BMWs now, and evidently that's just made its way over to the Minis as well. And I have to say, it's actually a really good box. It's nice and responsive. I've just got it in the standard drive mode now. It can be a little bit indecisive at times. It's not quite sure what gear to put it in. It can sort of change the gears quite a lot, um, more than you'd probably want it to. But overall, it's really quite a nice unit. You can whack it over into sport. It's dropped me into third there. And you know, that sort of sets it up for the corners, um, which is always a nice thing to have. We pitch it in. We get on that power. It's held third gear there. And then I can just override that with the manual shift. And the manual shift is nice and quick as well, actually. There's not too much delay on the paddles. So yeah, I mean, I think an automatic box really suits this car, actually. I've heard a few people saying that this should have the manual box, you know, because it's a mini and whatever, but I kind of disagree with that. I think this thing's reached a size level and a power level where a manual box doesn't really make all that much sense. Yeah, it might be fun in some scenarios, but for what people are gonna use these cars for, I think an auto box is actually really suitable. And it does mean that power is really usable as well. We've got Mini's all four, uh, four wheel drive system on this. It's mainly front biased, um, but obviously it is sending power to the rear. And we've got a limited slip differential on the front axle as well, which is really nice. And you can really feel that thing pulling you around corners. If you pitch it in and get on the power, it's really tucking that front end in and pulling the car around the corner. And it, it does feel actually uh, a lot smaller than this thing is and a lot lighter as well. that intake noise there it's really nice this engine uh, is actually making its way across a lot of the new BMW cars so for example it's in the new M135i it's in the X2 M35i it's going to be in the new mini GP3 the 2020 GP um, so I mean yeah this is it's a, it's, a, it's a great engine I can't can't say enough about that I've got the same one in mind but it's obviously the uh, detuned state because I've got the F56 JCW which is 231 horsepower. But um, yeah, we've got that single turbo, twin scroll. It spills up great, there's literally no turbo lag. Once that kicks down, that's it, you're away. It's really impressive. And paired with that eight-speed box, it works brilliantly as well. I have to say the steering in this car is actually much better than uh, what's in my F56 as well. That had quite a strange rack on it. It was very artificially heavy. It's self-centered quite a lot, which was just kind of odd when you're really driving and pushing on. Um, but this is really nice at lower speeds. It's nice and light. It's easy to navigate But when you're on those B roads and you're pushing on a little bit It's a really fast rack and a very direct rack as well So it just makes it really easy to drive and really fun to drive as well So the chassis itself is pretty good um, You really don't get much understeer at all actually uh, which is impressive for a car of this weight and size It just lays that power down brilliantly you put your foot down out of a corner and It's just gonna pull you right through which is great as well I can say though that the ride is a little bit busy. Um, it's quite firm, but you you'd probably expect that and you'd probably want it to be in a JCW model, but it actually works really well um, when you get it on B roads. It feels quite well damped. However, just every now and then, if you just sort of wanted to cruise along maybe a bit more comfortably, it can just feel a little bit busy and a little bit bumpy. The adaptive dampers are only available on cars that have rims smaller than 19 inches. And so this car with the 19 inch wheels, um, it doesn't have the adaptive damping, but I don't think that's too much of an issue to be honest because it does ride quite nicely overall. As always, we've got a nice set of uh, brakes on this JCW. Um, big four piston calipers up the front, uh, standard fixed flowing caliper on the back, but that pedal feels really nice. It's got a nice initial bite on it. You've not got too much pedal travel before that bite occurs. 
so it's really predictable and of course they're really powerful brakes cars 1550 kilos but nice big set of calipers on there uh, you can definitely have faith in these things I mean the fantastic thing about these engines is just that instant torque I mean it's just there it's really impressive like I said before there's just absolutely no turbo lag um, it's really impressive what they're doing with these modern turbo engines second gear <laughs> it was like 20 to 60 in just a matter of seconds so obviously this car is sat in quite a unique spot of the market um, it's not really in the hot hatch bit it's it's too big for that um, and it's you know it's it's got that power level as well it's kind of slightly above what the average hot hatch would be um, but obviously one of the main rivals for this will be the likes of the Golf R, the Seat Leon Cupra, the Estate, and I honestly think it's a really good counterpart to both of those, and it might be a little bit left field actually. Those cars are probably the expected ones that people are going to go for, and I think this is actually a really good option. Having said that, it's uh, certainly priced uh, in line with those cars. The Clubman JCW, this version, uh, starts at £35,000 in the UK. This car is pretty much fully optioned and it's spec to around 40,000, which is a lot of money, especially for a Mini. Whether it's worth that much money, I'll leave that for you to decide. Um, I think it all depends what you want to use it for. As a daily driver in the UK, I think this is a serious bit of kit and a serious car to consider. It's so capable, and as soon as the weather gets bad, you've got four-wheel drive, and it's a great four-wheel drive system as well, despite being front-wheel drive biased. It's a lot of fun to drive with. You've got that on tap performance as well. It sounds great. Listen to that. Yes, some of that might be a little bit fake, but the exhaust sound is actually pretty good, as I'll show you now. The outside of the club and JCW actually looks really good. Um, a lot of people sort of think the design's a little bit weird, a little bit maybe unique, I suppose. I actually think it's a really good looking thing. Um, it's not a particularly long car. I'd say it's probably not that much longer than the three door hatches. You've got a lot more space in the rear, as I'll show you now. Um, these seats are actually usable. You'll probably notice from the three door hatches, um, unless you've got like tiny kids, they're really basically pointless. Um, but yeah, these are really nice and they're trimmed in the same material as the fronts. Uh, so yeah, I really like those. If you come around to the rear, I suppose the rear of this car is probably the most unique thing about it. You've got these split rear doors and uh, these are actually great. There's a lot of boot space in here. Once again, we've got some camera equipment in there, but there's plenty of room. This floor will lift up and then it goes a lot deeper. But I'm actually a really big fan of the design. I think it looks really cool anyway. I'll close this back up for you and show you that now. I think it looks great. Uh, you've got those twin pipes. Um, it's a really quite aggressive rear end. You can see some vents down here. They are fake. Of course they are, because they're fake on everything now. It would be cool if they were real vents, but I suppose they probably serve pretty much no purpose. But um, yeah, they look really good. So coming around, another thing I'm a big fan of on this uh, Club and JCW is these wheels. So these are the 19 inch wheels. Um, they look much better than the cup spoke alloys they put on a lot of the three-door JCWs, which, you know, they look okay, but I don't think they're the best-looking wheels. These look really quite cool. Uh, come down to the front, we've got those nice big four-piston calipers, really powerful brakes on this thing, as I've mentioned, and um, yeah, they, they, just look, they just look great with those calipers. Come around to the front. Once again, it's really quite aggressive on the front, and it really tells you it's a JCW. You can see we've got some uh, nice vents coming down here, piping it off to the sides, both sides as well. Uh, you can see the radiator grills in there, which looks really quite cool as well. We do have the sort of bonnet scoop, which they put on the three-door hatches as well, and the other JCW models. Once again, 
it's not functional it'd be great if it was but i suppose with these engines they just don't need to pipe in the air from the bonnet so yeah overall i'm actually a really big fan um, I'm going to show you a bit more of the interior now on the front. So the seating position inside the club and JCW is actually really good. You can get nice and low, you feel like you're sat in the car, which is really important from sort of a driver's perspective and definitely one thing that I think is really important as well. Steering wheel is a great distance from you, you've got nice feel to it. It's the same again as the three-door hatch. This one's got the paddles behind it. These are made of plastic and to be honest, it would be really nice if these were made of some sort of metal, maybe an aluminium or another alloy. Um, because there is quite a lot of plastic in here but you know i suppose it's a pretty good interior overall but what you've got to think is this is a forty thousand pound car and it shares a lot of materials with the twenty thousand pound three-door hatch so it'd be quite nice if they gave you a little bit extra for the money you're paying Just want to say a massive thanks to Cooper Teesside Mini. They lent me this Clubman JCW for the full weekend and allowed us to review it. Um, and it's really, really appreciated. There's a great team of people down at the Cooper Teesside uh, showroom who are always willing to help you get the best deal and uh, just help you out generally if you've got a Mini. So do please check those guys out. I'll leave all the links in the description below. And if you're interested in this car specifically, it is for sale right now. I'll also leave that link below. Um, so yeah, please do go and check them out. And if you're looking to buy a new Mini, definitely a place to look at. Oh,